welcome to the Jeremy Hill Show. If you're easily triggered, leave now because this is not the show for you. Now, what I'm going to do is sing, or show you something that's outrageous, all right? It's going to be factual. It's going to be true. You're going to have two men, two ex-convicts who, two ex-convicts who went to prison, and they're going to tell you about straight pookies, men who are drug dealers, gangbangers, thug dudes who go to prison. Before they go to prison, they are straight. They only love women, but when they go into prison, they like to mess with the men. They sleep with the men. Now, this is not to be a offensive video or disrespect any member of the LGBTQIA community. This video is made for educational purposes to show you how some men interact with other prisoners once they go to prison or to jail. Now, let's go ahead and get into this, and you tell me what you think about this in the comments. Let's go ahead and get it started. The prisoner, his name was Murphy. He was over the intake of inmates, new inmates coming in. And they're standing at me like, hmm. He asked me, was I gay? And I said, yeah. And he was like, you are? He just said, you mind? And I was like, huh? He was like, and now, I didn't mind Murphy saying that I was mad. Murphy was drop dead gorgeous. I get into the dorm with Murphy. He had condoms. Where he comes from, I have no idea. And now, I wasn't used to, you know, when I was on the streets, I was always used to being the most aggressive person. But Murphy, that day, he's telling what he did to you. Got the sense of that. A whole lot of stuff that I was not expecting from this masculine, straight, acting man in prison and for him to be this attractive guy and he's doing all this freaky stuff and it just really blew my mind i mean i was blown away i was like okay i cannot believe that this man is doing this to me i thought i would be doing this to him it was safe and freaky because he had a, he had a wife and kids at home just bingo that's what i want to point out he's talking about a pookie a Tyrone, a Nook Nook, a June Bug, Ray Ray, a man who's out in them streets packing them straps, pull a strap on somebody, selling substances that he's not supposed to be selling. A hood dude tatted up, grilled out, as masculine and as alpha as you would think he could be. But when he comes to prison, he seeks the man. They're not seeking him. The gangster, the thug dude, the one that's married, the pookie is looking for men that he can pounce upon. This is why I wanted to show this show today. To show you there's a lot of these dudes in the streets that's claimed crip, blood, folk, uh, whatever you want to call them. There's a lot of them who are living double lives, man. This is how a lot of our women are catching a lot of STDs. Now, the women got it too now. They have more than men. But I want to show you this story. Telling you what went down. Man had a wife and kids. So, yeah. I, Murphy was serving time, I believe, for drug charges. I'm pretty sure he got caught in selling drugs. He's back in prison right now as we speak, too. He's been back and forth to prison. Still a very attractive guy. I have to say, there were some fine brothers in that prison camp. And a lot of those guys serving time were in there to serve their time and go home. I didn't see a lot of fights or argument. But I did see a lot of brothers having relationships with one another. Wow. Now, again, this was 20 plus years ago, but everybody in there was down. They were down for um, having sex with, another, with a man or with me or someone else. Everybody. Wow. Even the guards. So I was born. He said everybody was down to go to Pound Town, even the guards of the prison was in on I in there was down they were down for um having sex with a, with a man or with me or someone else everybody even the guards so I was blown away by this because I was not expecting this type of sexual activity or this type of acceptance of gayness in the prison system but it was in fact I would say I was treated like a king or a queen. Um, the guards, the inmates, the 
I never to go places and people would be just so glad to see you. I would go to the library to go read. They had a library with magazines and stuff, and I'd go up there and the guys would go, oh, sit next to us, and, and they want me to sit there, and they'd just stare at me, and I'd just be sitting there reading. To a certain degree, I understand why some people go back and forth to prison, because the environment can be very warm and inviting some prisoners back. Prison can be very warm and inviting. When I was locked up, all the times I locked up, I didn't find nothing warm or inviting in jail. I didn't go to prison, but I've been in jail a few times, and I didn't never think, man, I hate that I gotta go because it's so warm and inviting in here. I wanna come back. I never went through that, never. Have you, you been through that? Then, 20 years ago. But back to Murphy, this guy was maybe six, three, six, four, solid muscle, 200 and maybe 30, 240 pounds of muscle masculine, gorgeous man, tattoos, and he wanted me to. And he, he asked several times, and finally I said, okay. After that, I became the aggressor. And when he got out, he jumped right back into hustling, selling drugs. And I was uncomfortable with that. He would come visit me, he always had these guns. He felt he needed guns for protection because he felt people would rob him or try to harm him because he was selling dope. He had left his wife at this point and he was paying child support to his kids and taking care of them. So now he left his wife for the man that he was in prison with. Now remember, this so-called guy that he's talking about, he calls his name Murphy, was 6'4", muscled out, masculine, looked like an alpha male, a thug pookie dude had tattoos probably a grill probably belonged to the gang come out get right back in the streets and do dope boy stuff eventually leaves his wife and child to be with one of the men that he was sticking in prison now keep in mind murphy the dude that he's describing was there before this guy got there so the thug dude was probably sticking of the men before this guy came to prison. The one that's sharing his story. So he, and remember this dude said everybody was down for it. Even the guards, the men guards, all of them was down to do this thing. Let's keep that in your mind. I mean, he was rolling the money, he was brand new Mercedes Benz, he was rolling. But I was uncomfortable being around a man who can always had to have a good gun. He was convicted felon, I was a convicted felon. I was like, if we get caught driving down the street with these guns, I'm going to jail because you got a gun. But he doesn't say that didn't work too good. Because then he was a gangster too. He was he was real hood. He was once he got back on the streets, he became this really hood gangster person, which frightened me. Because, you know, I'm, I'm gay, happy. But when he got back on the streets, he just got this real tough demeanor about him. Um, he would say certain things and act certain ways, and I let it go. But anyway, there was a lot, there were some drag queens there who were running that place. I mean, they ran it. And it was very interesting because they were, they, were, they were not attractive. They were hideous, but they ran that camp and they was screwing everything there. Wow. I was surprised at the amount of guys who were having sex with these individuals, knowing that these guys were, you know, there were some issues going on there that these guys were rampantly running around doing. But we'll talk about that. I mean, this is video is a little longer than what I thought. I'm out of here. Peace. Now, think about what I just said. Now, now this ain't something that a lot of people don't know already. But at least I found a clip where a man is actually telling you what's going on in there. Because we hear these stories a lot about men going to prison and stuff like that. And they go in there and get them a girlfriend or what you want to call that. And then they get back on the streets and act like nothing ever happened. I want y'all to think about that for a second. That's kind of, kind of out there, ain't it? No way. I'll go ahead and let y'all go. I just want y'all to um see what y'all think about it. That's a wild story. Anyway, let me know what you think about this story in the comments. Have a good one.